Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Megan. It's so good to be back. I was just talking, Matt and I were just saying, it's been like seven weeks since I've been back on the stream. And I'm so excited to be here. George, how are you this morning? Great. Thank you so much for asking. Excited. Great, great, great episode. I'm No, I'm really, really excited. Matt, how are you doing? I, I'm doing well. I, I've had a lot of coffee this morning. May have put the espresso into the coffee, the drip coffee machine. So we're going to we're gonna go through this thing real fast and cool. uh, make it a really good episode. So uh, go ahead. We're why don't you do us the... Page. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, as everyone can see, we have a special guest. I will tee him up. Don't worry about that. Um, so I know last week we talked about the identify part of the NIST cybersecurity framework because... That's core, you have to start there because you literally cannot protect what you do not know you have. And now we're kind of getting to where the rubber meets the road with why we have these frameworks. We're gonna talk about the protect component of, cyber, of the NIST cybersecurity framework. And we do have a specialist on with us today who works in this space and also owned his own MSP, um, which makes him the guy we want to talk to on the stream today. So Matt, why don't you uh, yeah. do Specialist, honest. special guest, expert. I think that the number of descriptive terms could go on and on well past the length of our stream. But yes, we've got Tom Watson, uh, Titan HQ's channel chief with us today. Uh, Tom is someone that I've known for quite some time now and uh, is a good buddy of mine. He came on with us to talk a little bit about the protect component. And um, Tom's a bit interesting. He's worked for a number of different companies within our industry over the years. Uh, but more importantly, he has owned his own managed service provider. So he doesn't just have experience at the vendor level, but he has had his feet on the ground just as T George does every single day now. And uh, that's that's a very exciting thing. And it, it, it's, it's, it's great because, uh, you know, Tom loves talking about small business and the intersection between small business operations and technology to find efficiencies, to secure businesses and to help them grow, which is exactly what we do. And it's just an absolute pleasure to have you here, Tom. Welcome, welcome. Hold on a second. I got to make things a little more comfortable. Here, lean back a little. So you if they weren't an HQ shirt. <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm Bravo. talking about. Oh, Matt, really? It's great. Greatest showman. Thank I love you. it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look, it, there's a partnership between the shirt and hat. It just. I see that. I see that. Excellent. Yeah, that's Excellent. nice. Yeah, like a race car driver. Well, well, welcome, Tom. Say say good morning to our audience. Say hello. It's great to have you here. Yeah, great. I've heard great things about this live stream you guys do. This is fantastic. Um, I love just hanging out and chat. We had a great prep call, and we all get along great. We've been on lots of other webinars together before, and I like talking primarily about business and you know what we can do in the IT channel to help people grow their businesses help them be secure and safe. And now I am in a cybersecurity company, which makes that even more relevant. And I'm really enjoying my time at Titan HQ. I've been here 10 weeks. And uh, this is a great opportunity to spread the word about how you can safely secure your business and feel good about what you're doing on your computer and not be at risk. Yeah. That's right. That's it's great. Super. All right. Look. So, hey, George, please, why yeah. don't you lead yeah, us into the conversation? Well, first of all, Tom, thank, again, Tim, thanks for joining us. We always love having a guest and especially one that um, truly exemplifies what we want to accomplish with our customers and part of what we want to uh, spread the word about. So thank you. Um, so uh, this CSF Protect, as Megan said, it's a rubber meets the road part. It's like the part when most people think of cybersecurity, it's kind of the part you think of. It's the tooling, it's the systems, it's the it's the... Uh, components of of what may, of of the visible components of a program that most people see day in day out while the systems are operating not under a high threat and the idea here is that we want to uh you know really protect kind of three main components which is the identity um and the physical systems uh one of the things that uh the protect really stresses is protecting physical access to systems um the kind of the old saw and securities if you have access to it physically you own it so especially in, in, when it comes to the technology. So a lot of what the protect is, is trying to prevent um, incidents or prevent uh, and, and thing, prevent it before it happens. So a lot of it is, you know, uh, accounts, account control, account security, identity control, uh, how you set accounts up. Um, you know, obviously you want systems that can block things that happen. Uh, that's why we work with Titan HQ. Uh, they have a great DNS uh, filtering tool that works both inside an environment and on the go which is awesome and we could talk about that a little more uh, in the future 
Um, and then they'll probably really fall into the kind of multi-factor authentication and, you know, anti-phishing tools that kind of prevent things happening. So a lot of it is all the bits and pieces that make everything kind of work together into like a, a concentric, you know, circles or concentric defense in depth. But um, Matt and I had a, like a long talk about this the other day as we were prepping for this. And <sighs> yeah. I really... Yeah, Matt. I mean, I, 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 I can't I can't keep this graphic up any longer. But before we move on, let me explain why, because I think that's important. You know, um, we have a, a saying that you've heard us say on the team at times. I'm sure that Tom has said it before in webinars and other things. Not if, but when. Yeah. And when I see a chart like this, I see complete circles. And that makes me feel as though that offers complete protection, like absolute protection, right. not if. No, it, it's it, it's never just it's just not never it's never. But but that's I'm sorry, that's not realistic, and that's why I don't right. think that a visualization like this is realistic. So we're not going to show it anymore. It's gone. What we do, we're going to go medieval on this stuff. We're going to go medieval on security. We're going to start using castles. This is straight right. up Bill and Ted like air guitar stuff. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, it makes so much more sense. And when you understand why the tools that are used uh, to protect a business, as we're talking about today, are in place, they make a lot of more sense. They, they make a lot more sense to have. And then when they are in place, you have a greater sense of confidence in your network and your ability to work without interruption from security events and other malicious right. actions. So let's let's really jump into this. And no, I'm not going to ask anyone to do the Bill and Ted Air Guitar. I think we've got a quote of once per year, and we're all, we're getting close. We're getting, getting close. close. We're almost there. I think we have to show the Wild Stallions. Yeah, October um, or so. But, but really, like, think of your business. Instead of thinking of your business as a circle in the middle of a chart, think of your business as a castle. Right. You know, um, there's a part of a castle where all the, the, the treasure is held. You know, that's your revenue. That's your war chest. That's what you use to function. It's your intellectual property. The data. Thank you. Absolutely. The, the real treasure in modern businesses is, is that is the data you have on your customers, the data in your your, yeah. your, your, wor your workforce as well. Exactly. Right. Your people. Well, I say that, 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 you know, it's interesting, it's not 100%, protecting the people's ability to do work is, is really one of our core mission, right? And one of our core things we do is, is, is putting in place a de-risking that environment so that it can be operational. Um, and, and I think that at times can be overlooked because it's like, oh, this is all these things we have to add in, but mm -hmm. we want to mm -hmm. protect people. And also we want to protect their information. You know, there's nothing, we've said multiple times in here, you know, imagine you work for a company and there's a breach and now your security number, your pay, your home address, all those things are out in the open. Your, your life, birth, like your life, your, your PII. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's you know you really want to know that the company's taking it seriously, um, both for uh, internal and external customers. So like, let's let's get back to this diagram and just kind of make some comparisons right now. Right. Um, you know, my favorite and the most obvious is a moat. That is a protection, a level of protection around the perimeter of your castle. And I think that's a it's a fantastic analogy for a firewall. Yep. Right. It's very much so. It's, it's and and I, I I gotta say I think that the I, I don't know how to pronounce the word because I'm not from the 1600s, but uh, por porticulous. Porticulous. Port 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 oh, oh, it's a portway. Port. Thank you. It's it's um, the, it's, the, it's the gateway on the other side of the moat that you can pull the you know that you can basically it's, it's, in front of the drawbridge. It's, yeah, in front of the drawbridge. And I George was a history you, major too. So I, I kind so. of sometimes would look at something like a drawbridge being say a very selective method of access along the lines of say a VPN or something and it's being controlled and otherwise it's being corrected by a per perimeter. Um, you've got your Barbican. That is, a, that's a bit of a lookout. Mm -hmm. That I think mm -hmm. is something that you could probably compare to what, like an EDR or an antivirus system or something that is looking mm -hmm. over your network for right. activity. Yeah. Um, in fact, that may be something that we cover a little bit more in a later, um, a later episode in the series, more about detecting right. activity. Correct. But, you know, as we continue looking at this, this, this diagram, we've got the Baileys. The Baileys are walls. Those are literal concentric circles of security. You have an outer Bailey and you have an inner Bailey. And the idea is that if someone gets breaches your outer Bailey, they're kind of stuck in between the inner and outer. And that's where right. you corner them in. And that's how yeah. you remove your threat. Yeah, and, that's... you know, I think that's a that's that's an that's like probably the best analogy to explain what concentric circles of security means right. in, a, in a very practical way. Right. No. Right. They're, they're they're not they're not locked. Right. Things are things, data must flow and people must flow in and out of the system. Mm -hmm. And I think another another thing that's important is that this analogy looks seems very like centric on like an office office environment, but you know in our kind of modern hybrid work from anywhere workforce, 
every workstation endpoint sort of has to be its own little castle. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we really want to protect the identity of the of, of, of our staff or the end user. The identity is like the kind of the key to the castle in many ways. That's how you open the, so you get the drawbridge to come down. You know, you, you log into your cloud systems and you do all these, you know, so there's a lot of, yes, the barbecue. Um, but I think, I think that I think it's important to say that, like, you know, don't be so fixed on geography, but more like the, the kind of like. Well, more you, you can no longer be a fixed on geography. You have to get that out of your mind completely because that perimeter, that moat no longer exists. Well, think about this. We're, I mean, uh, Tom, you actually said it earlier when our, our pre-flight, you're like, none of us are in the same place. <laughs> Literally, all four of us are in various different places. Yeah. We're, doing, we're doing, you know, and, but we're doing it securely and safely. Yeah. And we happen to be using exactly. a HD product in order to do that. Now, um, there's a couple more items here, but I think we're going to save these for the detect segment uh, of our um, of our current block of, of episodes that we're working on because it gets a little bit more interesting. But, you know, the idea here was to, to just show that the idea of concentric, concentric circles of security is the combination of multiple forms of defense in, uh, in, in different manners to help create a bit of a holistic protection around a business. Is it always going to be perfect? No, it's not. But planning the right tools and understanding the weaknesses that are identified in the identify portion of CSF is how you find the right uh, way to protect a business. And that's ultimately what we do. And, you know, George, I wanted to talk a little bit, and I'd I'd love for this to ultimately really be some discussion time between you and Tom, since we've had, we have him here as a guest, just, but like, how do we, how do we do this for small businesses? Uh, Well, there's a ton. I mean, obviously, it starts with kind of having a unified stack or protect or system. Those are those kind of the, the castle bits, as you know, the graphic. And so you you know you have different parts that do different pieces of it, right? Like you know, we're we're very we have a very strong um, very strong EDR component. We have a you know which is part of the overall protect and detect. Um, we use uh, and we'll get to t- uh, web, uh, web tech in a second, but. Um, is is emo fit is anti phishing outside the net outside so that that is not an entryway into the network um there is um a component of of a protecting identity with multi-factor and training people to use those how to spot it you know one thing we didn't mention is um in the protect in the this cybersecurity framework um per, uh, education is kind of stuffed into the protect and as we were preparing this, we thought it'd be better to take it out as as, as its own um, it's, as its own uh, kind of component because uh, the education is such a strong piece of of of, uh, of the overall uh, program that you have to develop with customers. And so the idea is, and, and, and the idea is that for us to protect, we have a unified stack across our customer base so that we have a, a great deal of visibility. And and part of that is working with with, with Titan HQ. And the Web Titan product as a DNS, because DNS filtering and DNS management is a very powerful tool in, in what's called breaking an attack chain. Because the idea here is that if, if an attacker, that you click on a bad link, something happens, um, the command and control component can get broken pretty easily by the DNS uh, blocking the access to that control. So it's it's a great way of that kind of interlocking defense mechanisms to protect the, to protect the end client. So, there's a, so, you know, for us, a lot of it is a, there's tooling, but a lot of it is also the human component of managing the tooling. Um, I think that's the piece that has to always be kind of brought back around. It's like, you can have the greatest tools in the world and people talk speeds and feeds and stock and seam and all this stuff. But if there's not a person managing. Yeah. You know, there's a line from the original Ghostbusters movie towards the end when, where uh, Winston said, more says, more says. we have the tools, we have the talent. Right. <laughs> you need both. You need both of those both. things. Or Absolutely. Gozer's going to take you down. Gozer's going to get your email. Right. They're going to get into your yeah. system and uh, log into your LinkedIn and start randomly um, giving people kudos for their achievements. Exactly. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. And we're, we're talking about this, and it sounds very specialized, but at the end of the day, this is just kind of a part of our normal offering because it's what a modern business needs. Well, you correct. Know, it's, correct. It's a big deal. And, um, you know, you were talking earlier about how we use Web Titan and that the, 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 the castle is great, but there are all of these outposts that exist. And those outposts are remote workers, they're regional offices, they're, they're the road warriors. They're literally Tom the road warrior over right. there. <laughs> you know? and, yeah. and, and one of the beautiful things about 
Web Titan's ability to filter web content to remove a lot of uh, threats is that it doesn't just have to work within a single location like a business. It can work on individual machines and still be fairly non-invasive. And I was hoping that Tom can give us a little insight into, you know, not necessarily the mechanics of it, but how that benefits our customers when we deploy it for them. Well, yeah, I think this goes into a bigger conversation of, look what happened two years ago when we sent everyone home and all of a sudden we took that local area network and, yeah. and we just blew it up. It was gone. Yeah. And exist. now it, 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 it's all over here anymore. And then what do you do in that situation? We'd already started moving that direction with Office 365, with tools that don't require the land. We don't, we're getting rid of the servers. We're moving to this SaaS model, but it happened all of a sudden. And when we did that, now we're relying on some Verizon Fios router and we're relying <laughs> Xfinity. We're relying on, you know, we're relying on consumer level products right. that are out there that are not equipped to secure business. And we're basically, people are running things on their home machines. I mean, it, it created a mess and right. you know, who's left to sort this out is often people like yourself, George. Fortunately, I, I don't have to anymore. Yeah. And so we, so we're, we've been left playing catch up um, on, on this MSP end to secure the end users and make sure they can work effectively. They can get things done. And, but that the tools aren't like draconian. They're not, they're not, they're not stopping you from working. They're enabling you to work and securing you. And that's kind of where pieces like this come in. We've got to make it so people, when they're remote, when they're road warriors, like I am, I'm on the road two to three weeks a month. I've got to be able to do things safely. I need to not bring vulnerabilities into my work machine and the work okay. network because that machine, while I'm on the internet here, it's also attached to all of these work resources over here. Correct. Yeah. And so I've got to find a, bri a bridge in there that's going to be able to do it. And that's why I love that. I love, Matthew, you put that graphic up. Because the castle and all those pieces of the castle define mm -hmm. this really well, and we need those we, those concentric layers of security, and we need we need we need those watch posts, and that's kind of like what the tool does. Like you said, the 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 on the go agent takes what would normally just be on the local area network in your office on your machine, and um, well, on not your machine, but protecting the domain, basically the IP address on that means, and it extends it out to wherever you go, and that's right. important. Yeah, it's, you know, it's great. And it, it's, it's really multifaceted because not only is it a great uh, tool for breaking an attack chain and protecting it, it's also great for filtering um, content. Let's say you have, you know, uh, employees that are using work machines for dem dem demoing things, or you have multiple people using machines. You want to be able to not to kind of control access or control um, them going to sites or resources that may not be approved. It's part Look, of it, role. I think the easiest. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that okay. way. I just was thinking that the, the easiest way to, to to go into this is to see uh, Titan's software being used in school systems, where you Correct. have children of a certain age, and there are simply things that are flat out inappropriate to be viewed on that well, network. We actually, you know, interesting. We, we have it deployed at a, at, a, at a one of our customers. They're a nonprofit educational uh, f, uh, partner uh, uh, mm -hmm. provider, and this was pretty uh, pretty high level for them to get this implemented. So that you know, even though they're they're their education, they're educating adults, um, they felt that it was important that they provide a classroom that is, I would say, sanitized but protected against people yeah. utilizing equipment that or utilizing it, it, their it's, equipment it's a, for something it, inappropriate. It's a place of learning, no more than that. Correct. That's really um, what it is. And and I mean, it's and the other thing, another thing, it's great for uh, we started using it is. Um, in, in, in conjunction with other tools is the battle of some shadow IT. Mm -hmm. You can see when people are going on to that non unapproved Dropbox account, you know, and you start combining it with other tools that are out there and some really great ones. Um, and what happens is you can build this really great composite picture of what people are doing. Like you're like, hey, I don't understand why your staff was going on a Dropbox account. Your approved uh, account is Google Workspace or Office 365. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you start combining those, because, and, you know, and once again, part of this protect idea is that, uh, and this kind of goes back to the asset piece. If you have data that's living in places that it doesn't belong, you know, you're exposing both yourself, the company, the, the end user customer, the employees, let's say, you know, where you've seen breaches, uh, we've worked on customers where, 
you know, there might have been the breach might have been the HR person's computer. And now it's, you know, every piece of the uh, company's HR files are exposed or have been exposed. So um, it happens. And you, know, with it, you want as many layers of protection that are not intrusive, though. And any time I really hit on that, on that point is that the last thing you want is that it, the security gets so complex that people find any which way not to comply with it. Or any which way to get around it. Get around it right. Introducing shadow IT into your network. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. So you beat me to it, Matthew. I love the term shadow IT. And I love yeah. like, you know, it, it's, it's something that has to happen because all of us do it. I do it. Right. I'm going to admit it. I use, I use some resources that maybe are outside of what I'm supposed to use for work. And the fact is, is getting some, at least knowing that's happening, you might not necessarily need to stop it, but knowing it's happening can really help out when you have a problem later on. Right. Right. You can start to detect where that issue originated right. from. The, the it, could be is that, and it could also be a preventative way of detecting. I can see that we're using this particular tool. It's not one that we have licensed. It's not one that we should be using, <laughs> but we do have an excellent tool you could use. Let's get you trained on it so you're using it. We're also paying for it, so please yeah. just use it. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we, see, we see it all the time. I mean, I, I, I literally talked to a, a, a client uh, the other day, and they're paying for Dropbox, Google Apps, and Office 365 full freight for all three of them. <laughs> and we're so, like, we're so like, then it, it's also something that essentially what, you what you're doing? saying is it helps cloud sprawl. It helps control cloud sprawl at the same time. Well, it's it's, it's, it's a tool in it. It's it's it's, it's a tool in our in our toolkit that had that visibility. Um, you know, as as MSPs, uh, our you know, if we take our kind of like our, our I would say our renewed obligation to cybersecurity. For our customers and protect them and, and advise them. If we're if we're, if, we're, if that's our job, mm -hmm. we need the tools to be able to, to to give the advice to the leadership team and management teams to, to to really have them understand what's happening in the business. Much like you know, and I'm sure Matt and Megan have heard me say this a hundred times. It's like you know, if, if if you think of your back office team or your business services team, much like your attorney or your accountant or your HR uh, outsource HR professionals, we fit into that kind mm -hmm. of environment. And we have to give people the information they need to run their businesses yeah. and, and assess their risk. And I think the other piece of this that's important, and, and I'll, I'll say this probably four more times as we finish the series, is that cybersecurity is not an IT risk. Cybersecurity is a business risk. It's an existential and, risk. Well, exactly. It's, it's, it, it needs to be taken to the same level of severity and attention that financial risk or uh, HR risk is taken in a business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you when you look at your you know you look at risk uh, as a uh, as a whole, cyber risk is in there with financials and technology. And, and uh, we just happen to be the folks that can help customers control that risk and manage it. Yes. So that's beautiful. That was wow. That went into some good detail. I was getting really excited. There. I love we got we got to clip we got to clip that up. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> marketing um, <laughs> so um you know I, I just i i always try to share one kind of random story and um hey dns filtering has always been really important to me in fact i think this is one of the first things um tom and i talked about when we got caught up after he moved over to titan hq but you know when i went i don't remember if it was for the mcse in 2000 or 2003 but i had an instructor who actually let me get up and help teach the courses and we were going over dns and we were talking about how you know active directory and DNS are super tightly tied together these days. Okay, maybe that was 2000 then, because that was a big part of it. Yeah. And then I explained to the class what DNS poisoning was and demonstrated it in front of everyone and ended up like technically compromising their testing domain controller for the class and almost got removed from the class completely. Of course, eventually they were like, wait, you just showed us something that's important. And I'm like, yeah, that's all I was trying to do. I'm not trying to be malicious. I'm right. trying to say like, these are the things we should be here learning about. So eventually, you know, it got taken care of. I got the certifications. Um, but what's interesting is that was 2002 because it was the MCSC for 2000. And so that's about 20 years ago. And DNS poisoning and other types of exploits existed then and they were a problem, yeah. but they weren't a problem at the level and the frequency they are today. Today, this stuff's starting to become a bit of a nightmare. And I, I didn't use the word nightmare for the sake of like the whole FUD factor. I mean, like this is the kind of nonsense I encounter on a daily basis when I'm trying to do research. That's how right. often it happens. And yeah, that's it's why it's important common. to talk about. Exactly. It's very so, common. but you know, it, it, we've been on for a while now. Um, we've talked quite a bit uh, about uh, everything under protect today. And you know what? I, I just gonna say it because I want to get it out. But we do have a pretty sweet resource that we're going to release at the t by the time we're done with these areas. Um, 
being covered. And the more that we go through this, the more ideas I have to enhance it. So I might have awesome. to cut these off eventually. But let's Good. talk a little bit about what's going on next week, George. We've got Detect. Yeah. We're, so next week is 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 kind of the uh, the really kind of more Justin. complicated. Mm. Just, well, first of all, I'm Justin, our CIO, back for the very special guest. We're really excited to have Justin come on. So I'm super yep, excited. Yep, yep. But um, really, the Detect is, is, is a really a uh, key component of, 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 the, of the CSF. It's the one that tends to get overlooked the most. It's the uh, looking for anomalies, events, things that are things that are happening and having that uh, insight into the real-time data at the customer or at the, at the environment. And um, it's part of the idea of uh, the really complex partners where most people stumble and even ourselves, we have a really hard, uh, really hard mountain to climb on the uh, security continuous monitoring. I'm, I'm going to say tower to climb because we're going to continue with the, the castle analogy. <laughs> right? We're going oh, to yeah. do, we're going to have like, the archer slits. We're going to look at those pretty soon. We're going to have the towers. Exactly. We're going to continue with it because it That's really works cover. nicely. So it's good. Um, so, but, I, but yeah, I think that the continuous monitoring is a very complex component. And that's why uh, I think Justin has a, some really great insight on it. I, um, so I think it's going to be a really yeah. good show. I can tell you, I'm excited for Justin to show up in a couple of weeks, and I'm excited to just quickly run over what we do have from now till September 1st, which is really yep. nice. Cool. So in two weeks, on July 28th, we will have Justin here for the detect portion of NIST CSF. And then on August 11th, we'll have Jonathan Crow from Ninja One joining us for Respond. And that's going to be fun because about a year ago, we did uh, an episode around tabletop exercises, which are related to the Respond part of NIST CSF. And we had a power outage here at the house. So we were talking about scenarios and dealing with them. And then we had an unplanned scenario take place. So we're going to consider this to be tabletop exercises part two. And uh, I just ordered a gas generator, George. I'll let you know about that on the expense report this month. <laughs> um, <laughs> after that, on August 25th, we have Tim Golden of ComplianceRisk.io joining us for the recover portion of CSF. You, remember, uh, you may remember that. He joined us for episode 101, which was the first that we did of 2022. So Tim will be back with us. I'm really looking forward to that. And then we are going to round out our content block on NIST CSF with part six. That's education. That is what George was talking about earlier, the kind of extraction of that portion from what we talked about today to really get into it with detail. And we've got a great person for that. We've got Marnie Stockman, the CEO of Lifecycle Insight. She's a former educator turned SaaS vendor. Uh, education is something she's incredibly passionate about, and I'm really looking forward to having her join us. So that's uh, that's what we've got happening between now and September 1st. So get it on your schedules. Um, I would like to say to TiVo it, but I don't think TiVos matter anymore. Plus, it's the internet, so it doesn't really yeah. apply anyway. <laughs> it was online. <laughs> but, um, so that's it. We've got some great stuff coming out um, over the next few weeks. At the end, we've got a great resource that we'll make available. And I just wanted to Thank Tom for joining us today and have a little yeah. bit of fun with the team. It was great to have awesome. you. It was great to be coordinated. Look at that. You guys, you got the green one. I mean, I have to get the green shirt from you guys. But um, Oh, we got yeah. we got new ones. I got new ones coming out. I'm going to get you a whole bunch of stuff. We've got, awesome. well, we, we, we've got something nice coming to you, Matthew. We've got some he's chocolates got, and other things coming. He's got the, the fall 2022 capsule collection of Titan HQ shirts <laughs> at Fashion awesome. Week this year. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Um, wait, we just got to comment in. Let's see what that is. Ah. Thanks, Ray, Ray letting us know is great talk. Thanks, it's great Ray. having you here in the audience as always. Um, a, lot, a lot of people are taking vacation this week. I noticed a little bit quiet. The, the, the oh. usual, usual, uh, the usual peanut gallery. Is that a good uh, peanut gallery? Um, yes. Is uh, is missing from today? But um, yeah, we are not missing. We'll be back in two weeks. And folks, until then, again, thank you, Tom. Thank you, George and Megan. As always, it's great to see you. I'm sure I'll talk to you guys on Teams in like the next five minutes. But uh, for everyone else, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. 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 Bye.